सभी को नमस्ते गुड मॉर्निंग एंड वेलकम वी आर डूइंग यू एच वी थ्री एंड इन यू एच वी थ्री आफ्टर कमिंग अप टू लेक्चर सिक्सटीन वी केम बैक टू द एक्सरसाइज सो एक्सरसाइज वन ऑब्जर्विंग द सेल्फ बाय द सेल्फ वी हैड कम्प्लीटेड अर्लियर एंड इन एक्सरसाइज टू ऑब्जर्विंग द बॉडी बाय द सेल्फ we did a brief recap of some of the steps which lead up to step 7 and then we discussed step 7 yesterday so to do the brief recap in exercise 2 we said that i am there and the body is there and i can see that i am there because i can see my imagination the activities that are going on within me so i know that i am there i exist the body is also there i can see that how can i see that because i can read the sensation from the body so i know that the body is also there then we said that between these two self and body there is some exchange of information and it is only information that is being exchanged nothing physical is being exchanged so i am giving some instruction to the body the body is following there are several sensations in the body due to the various processes going on in it i am reading some of these sensations based on whatever i think is important making some meaning out of it and then giving the instruction and the body follows so between the two this you know instruction this is also an information reading sensation sensation is also an information so between the two you see that there is only exchange of information nothing else is happening and if you see in this entire exchange i am the one who is deciding the self is deciding everything about the exchange so the instruction i am giving based on whatever i want the body to do the sensation i am reading depending on what i think is important for me at that time so i read that sensation then this giving meaning to it that is also my doing and it depends what meaning i give to it i may give this meaning that a meaning that is in line with what really is or i may give it a different meaning based on some assumption that i have but we'll come to that what we were trying to discuss before reaching step 7 was that there is a distance between me and the body there is a distance between me and the sensation that i read from the body so we looked at say pain sensation itching sensation some sensation that we read in the body and we asked those questions in step 4 whether i am in that sensation or i am that sensation or am i at a distance from the sensation and we said that i am not the sensation i am not in the sensation also rather i am at a distance from the sensation this far we had tried to look at in exercise 2 earlier
I can see that I am not the sensation, nor am I in the sensation, because I am not bound to read the sensation all the time. My very interaction with the body is not all the time. It is only sometimes. It's not a continuous thing. It's temporary. So as and when I choose to, as and when I require, as and when I think it's important, I pay attention to the body. When I don't think it's necessary, I don't pay attention. Therefore, I may be sitting and busy with my own thoughts and not even aware that the body is there. So I can do that because there is some distance between me and the body. Then in step seven, what did we see? Or at least it is there as information we may not have the competence to see it yet, but as a, um, something to reflect on, something to explore, something to get our readiness up for exercise three to talk about the space. This step seven was included in the exercise two. So in step seven, what is being said that I am in space and I am in coexistence in space. Body is also in space. Body is also in coexistence in space. But there is a distance between the two. In that distance also there is space. So I am able to you know, transact this information with the body but just by virtue of being in space in this form. As and when I require. It is my choice, my decision. So this is happening just by virtue of being in space, but the decision making is up to me. So I am in, I'm the one sending the instructions to the body through space. And I am the one who's reading specific sensations that are taking place in the body through space. I need to observe this directly for myself. Like I said, it's early days. We may have to build our competence because we are used to looking at gross things outside with the help of the sensation in the body through the gross eyes. But when it comes to more subtle realities like the self, we won't be able to see the self through the gross eyes. So we may not be able to see it as a distinct reality. To begin with, the information is given, the thoughts are there. And with that, we try to work with it, explore it, and try to see some of it. But when it comes to space, space is the subtlest reality of all. So obviously, you know, if we are not able to see the self directly, other than the activities within, then we need to develop our competence little more until ultimately we awaken to all these higher activities ultimately awakening to the activity of realization, the highest activity within the self. By the time I awaken to that highest activity in the self, 
I have gained the competence to be able to see the space directly. That much subtlety I am able to see then. Then I will be able to see the space, the coexistence and all of it. And how every unit in fact is in coexistence in space. So this entire existence is expressing itself in this form of coexistence. Every unit in nature is expressing itself in this coexistence. Since there is a distance between the self and the body, I can interact with the body from time to time as and when I choose to, but I am not dependent on the body. My being is not dependent on the sensations. My being is not dependent on any outside object for that matter. I am just in coexistence in space. This, when I am able to see directly, this is what is referred to as knowledge or truth, satya. Like people spend lifetimes for this knowledge, for seeing things as they are, seeing the reality as it really is, not in the way I am seeing it right now. And when I see it that way, then nobody has to tell me that I am related to all. Because I can see it directly. Being in space, we are all interrelated. So there is a relationship with all. When I am able to see that relatedness with all, then I have the feeling of love. Seeing my relationship with all, I have the right feeling within me, the feeling of love. With that feeling of love, I take responsibility for all. I become responsible towards all. So I have compassion in me. And with that compassion, I have, you know, whatever interaction I have with people, in my behavior, this is seen. So these are the outward expressions. The outward expression of this knowledge, this truth will be this compassion, this responsibility towards all. And within me, I will have the feeling of love and I will be able to directly see the truth, the way things are. So yesterday, we had given this assignment for you to reflect on and we can take observations regarding this. This is what we had to um, reflect on yesterday. So any thoughts on that? Also yesterday there was some question which we weren't able to answer in time. So we can take that up again. Namaskar madam, namaskar to all. Namaste. Madam, in continuation to my exploration yesterday, I have been observing, but uh, I am unable to observe directly. I observe through <laughs> some other medium only. For example, I am observing that I am unable to observe. <laughs> uh, directly. Yeah, yes. I observe. Suppose yes. uh, I am in front of my laptop. Suppose if I close my eyes, I am unable to see that. So I am dependent on eyes. <laughs> So, can I, is it correct? Well, I won't say that. Okay, okay. Then uh, wait, reading. Wait, 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 wait. Don't rush into this. Yeah. There are many people who can't see through their eyes. Yes? Yeah, yeah madam. 
they are able to do many things hmm. isn't it in fact directly through the self many things are possible we just don't know our potential yeah yeah really so we feel so small so limited that i feel that i am dependent on the body in fact it's the other way around isn't it yes madam the body is dependent on me today if i decide to dissociate with the body where is the body body is gone mm. yeah it will decay and rot and over will go back to the soil and the air and everything isn't it yes madam but i am independent of the body i'm using the body like a tool yeah yeah it's like saying you know <coughs> i'm different from a, that wait wait not a good simile but it's like saying you know my phone allows me to talk to such and such person hmm. whenever i want now my phone is not there i am dependent it is whatever i perceive it as no yeah 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 in fact the self can communicate directly without words without yes, speech madam. yes yes hmm through thoughts yeah through feelings and there have been many experiments with many children in many organizations where they are working with children trying to get them to develop the skill of using the ability of the self directly to read you know, to be able to see mm-hmm. so these children they work with children because children have less preconditionings Yeah, yeah, but so fixed. Like in adults, we get fixed. Yeah, yeah. Totally dependent on the body. So if I can't see through the eyes, I can't see at all. It's not yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah, madam. So these children, with a blindfold on them, they are able to read from books. Mm-hmm. They have developed that skill. That means it is something that can be learned if it is practiced. Mm. But we don't. practice no, if you really, see man. somebody who loses their sight yeah you will notice that the other senses of the body become sharper ah oh, yes madam we observed how does that happen because the self can see that now i'm not getting information through this sensation let me try to <coughs> interpret through the other sensations what is going on yeah maybe so it pays more attention to the other sensations yeah yeah and so you will notice that such people who have you know not or who have lost their eyesight they have sharper sense of smell they have sharper mm-hmm. acuity of hearing because yeah, yeah. that self is trying to get more information through the other senses because it's not getting information through this one yeah madam so in fact you know i am not dependent on the body i use it like a tool like an instrument hmm. so if your laptop is not working and you're not able to see the slides in that no you are not able to connect then you use your phone also you can connect you don't keep dependent depending only on the laptop and keep crying that my laptop got spoiled now i can't do anything you use some other instrument and you use na you connect yeah. isn't it yeah madam so similarly if one sensation is not working you try to work with other sensations Isn't it? Yeah, madam. Uh, namaste, Didi. Namaste to all. And there was the, I mean, there was a pending discussion yesterday. So yes. in connection that, I want to. Yes. Can you just <coughs> remind me, repeat us what was the discussion? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we discussed that I am related to everyone. Hmm. In this in space. 
and uh, there are there are some preachings by other religious preachers that if you say, think that you are related to everybody and you are related to every unit everything in this world in this uh, creation uh, that is one way the other way is that uh, i think that i am not related to anybody but i only i am devoted to god so in that case uh, so how we can interpret that yeah so i think the you know problem lies in our interpretation i don't think anybody says that if you are related to god you are not related to anything else first of all what do we call god na some people mm-hmm. refer to space as god some people think of god as a form na but mm-hmm. in any religion i don't think they say this that you don't have you don't see your relationship with others because in every religion you will find this truth love compassion in every teaching you will every religion if you see the essence at the core there is talk of helping humanity alleviating another suffering you no know? hmm so even when you supposing if this means that i go to the temple very often every day you can say i spend hours trying to communicate with god whatever it is and i come out and there is somebody in pain somebody say there is you know some some person needs help can yeah. i not help that person is yes. that what my teaching is telling no na no no not that not that ah. so how why will i help that person only when i see my relatedness with that person will i help no if i don't see my relatedness with them then i will ignore that person uh, it will not bother me at all but somewhere it bothers because this is how it is the relationship is already there sometimes what is being said is that you know an interpretation of detachment yes yes yeah? i think yes. you have the meaning that yes that is exactly yeah so that okay you feel detached from the other detached what it really you know is trying to portray so that's why i said words are sometimes um you know the meaning gets lost in them but what is being said there is that you don't have attachment to the other unit rather you step back and you rightly evaluate that person not over evaluate what we tend to do is those who are related to us sometimes some of those people we over evaluate them so we feel attached to them so we feel you know anything that they are suffering i also start suffering that isn't it yes yes but that's not helping anybody imagine if a child is crying and the mother also starts crying with the child no it's no use now it's not going to help anybody but if the child is crying and the mother is able to rightly evaluate and see why the child is crying she can alleviate the child suffering yes yes but if she also you no know, like if child falls i also fall with the child then mm. i can't do anything it's like when you go in the airplane what do they say for those who have children please the adult put your mask on you no know, when they are talking about if the oxygen becomes less you can pull the mask down and put it on your nose and mouth and breathe normally all this they say you no know, in the flight yes yes so they always say for those who have small children please put on your mask first 
then help the child. Yes, yes. Mm. Because if I myself am not in a stable condition, how I am going to help anybody else? Yes. So I have to have that distance. Distance in the sense, not physical distance, mm. but I have to be able to rightly evaluate the situation and then help. But the feeling of love and compassion will be there. Mm. I will yes. try to do whatever best I can do for the other. But yeah. I will not fall with the other. Yes, yes. Makes sense? Yes, yes. That is exactly detachment. So it also helps in the in our realization. Mm. Yes. Temporarily yes. it requires detachment also. So that's what. Yeah. But at the same time, having said that, it doesn't mean that we will ignore everybody else in that family. Or, you know, we'll no, shirk away from other responsibilities. We'll continue to do our responsibilities, but without that um, sort of getting so attached to it that we also start suffering with them. Yes. In other words, it is having no expectation from others in, in turn if you help somebody. Don't expect the help from them. Um, is, is it? I, I would say it's okay to expect, but I don't link my happiness with that. I am already happy within. <coughs> if that expectation is not met, it's okay. I also accept that the other lacks understanding. Mm. See, we do expect, expect in the sense, um, say, you know, I greet somebody. Mm. I say hello. So I do expect that the person will reply, respond. Mm. That expectation may be there and that's okay. But if the other doesn't respond, then I don't become unhappy. Mm. Because I can also see that, okay, the other may not have seen me or they may not have been able to you know, uh, pay attention to my waving of the hand or saying hello or something or the other is just angry upset lacks understanding is not there could be many reasons but i don't get upset because i am myself full of that feeling of love yes. seeing my relatedness with all so then it doesn't matter so much to my state my state stays the same hmm. yeah Yes, yes. So we can relate also that suppose uh, somebody is not behaving properly as expected. So in that mm. case, we think that yes, he has a less competence. Mm. So yeah. in this sense, we can also be, see the detachment temporarily. Can yeah, you? in the sense that, uh, see, th that's why there's a very fine line between detachment, but having seeing the relatedness and being responsible towards them that is one way mm -hmm. but many people may interpret detachment as i have nothing to do with them they can be on their own i am separate so that meaning should not go across that is my main yeah yeah yes and another question is that uh, mm -hmm. how can we, see we can feel that there is a distance between the Self and the body, and I have also mm, learned from the UHB experts that this distance can be increased or decreased. So yeah. in that, please. Yeah. So in a way, like you can say, we are not talking of physical distance right now. We relate everything with the physical sensation. Because we are tuned to looking through the cross eyes and so we see everything as the gap, that that gap has increased, gap has decreased, distance is, you know, in terms of walking, how much distance there is and so on. But if you see, one self can communicate with another self, even yes. when they are miles apart. Possible? Mm -hmm. Yes. 
telepathy. You've heard of telepathy and all, and some of us may have experienced yes, any yes. incidences like this. Mm. So that means that communication is possible. It is yes. just if I am tuned to that or not. Mm. So if I am busy with something else, no, then I am not paying attention to that at all. So I don't see it. I don't read that sensation. I am not aware of it. Mm. There is a football player who's playing, and he gets injured while playing. The ball hits the shin, and there is blood coming out, and there is a wound. But he is. More focused on the goal. The goal has to be made, and I must do this, and I must do that. So he is busy running from one side to the other. Why is that happening? Because there is some distance. No? Mm. Otherwise, he would be forced to read that sensation. He is not forced to. It is a choice. Yeah. So when he finishes what he is doing, what he thinks is important. Then his attention goes to that. Then he is able to feel that sensation of pain. Before that, he may not have even felt the pain because he is so busy with his own agenda that this is important for me. I must do that. And after the goal is done and they win the game, or even if they lose the game, the game is over. Then he pays attention to this wound that was there. It doesn't mean that there was no sensation before. The sensation was there before also. Yes. But he did not read it because he was busy with something else. So in that sense, you can say that that distance is increased. Yes. Or the distance is decreased. When you are right, you know, I mean, you are Say you're sitting idle. A lot of times what happens is people, when they're busy during the day, they're active, they're working with many things. When they lie down at night, then all these problems they start thinking about. No? Yes, yes, it happens. Something is going on in the stomach. I think I better get some tests done. Today my this part is hurting. That part is hurting. Maybe I should do this. Maybe I should do that. Why? Because now we are not busy with other things. The body is just lying on the bed. But my thoughts are busy with some sensation that I read in the body. Mm -hmm. yes. mm. So now that distance seems to be very less. Yes. Because yes. it is as if it's happening to me only. I get so involved with it yes. that I think that is me sometimes. Yes, yes. Isn't it? Yes. So like that, you can decrease, you can increase. And this is possible because there is, you know, the body and the self are not like heart bound together. There yes. is a distance. Mm -hmm. Space is there between. Mm. So this, you know, by virtue of being in space, you are able to get this information. But that doesn't mean that you are in that sensation. Mm -hmm. Isn't it? Yes. It's difficult for us to try to say this in words and to try to see it because, like I said, some limitation, you know, our lack of competence, being able to because we try to relate everything through the physical world. Mm -hmm. But then it's a little bit different. For instance, if you see right now, if we are traveling in a car, what do we see? We see the road in front of us, maybe a little bit to the side. Mm. Think it? But we can't see above, we can't see behind except for the maybe the rear view mirror, isn't it? Mm, yes. A realized person will be able to see all around, everything that is happening. 
if you read some of these descriptions that people realize people have given they are able to see all that they are able to see you know the electrons the protons the dance of the electrons they call it you know mm -hmm. those are things that we are not able to see unless we use say an electron microscope or something mm -hmm. but through the self many things are possible i don't want to get into examples of other people because then again it is hearsay then again it is i can't validate it and all of those but we can keep it open for ourselves that possibilities are immense potential is immense we just need to tap it okay thank you thank you namaste ma'am namaste to all ma'am uh, relatedness relationship uh, between i self with the others uh when i am observing myself um, i can related with i can say that uh, i related with the all uh, because uh, suppose uh, when i am standing in a bus stand somebody says that i missed the bus i lost the document in the bus uh, like that if they say i feel myself yeah uh, uh I have a feeling that i myself lost the document uh, even the person is unknown for me i never seen till that day i feel i have a feeling so uh, means i have a relation between myself and that person and uh, when i see that the people like handicap people i have a compassion so like that even the people is not my blood blood relative or a friend and uh, i have a feeling so no opposition that is how i conclude that i have a relationship with the, all the people and uh, myself i am uh, these days i am observing i have a person i don't want to share my personals uh, to any unknown person like that i have i i am i have, i have that uh, character but uh, these days i am observing if somebody asks i can say uh, like uh, what i am doing without any hesitation because the day before yesterday we went for a trekking uh, some unknown person asking uh, where you are coming from Uh, like that they ask simply they ask one question i share all that uh, we are coming from here to here for this like that i told everything by the time i thought that this is how i am not behaving in earlier maybe because of the precondition so we should not say all the details to the unknown person we thought mm -hmm. that unknown persons are strangers so yeah. that kind of uh, thought or a precondition was there in my mind uh, maybe it will be filtered to not to share the all that information so gradually that kind of precondition is dissolving mm -hmm. uh, that is the one uh, sharing uh, one observation about myself ma uh, regarding that uh, the the distance between that self and the body uh, still i can say that i am not in that pain uh, i am not that pain only that much i can able to see ma'am that's nice it was very nice yeah because see we cannot rush this it is a slow uh -huh. process it will happen slowly see coexistence is expressing itself na mm -hmm. that expression of coexistence you cannot rush it <laughs> you mm. cannot plant a seed in the soil and say you know from next day wait for the fruit it won't mm. happen it mm. will take its own time no matter yeah. what you do you mm. could slow down the process if you are trying to Mm. no get it yeah. to root because it cannot happen it yeah. is a slow process so here also it will not happen mm. if i try to force it then i am into a reaction that is slowing mm. down my progress further isn't it because yeah. whenever i am reacting i am busy with b2 mm. and i am not trying to observe so it slows down my progress so it's okay mm. to be 
slow to be able to see that okay i can't see this right now but i keep trying i keep exploring mm. at some point i will yeah. see we all will isn't it mm. nice thank you thank you important thing to see is you know in that what you mentioned yeah that you have the feeling for the other mm. but important to see is if they are suffering i shouldn't start suffering mm-hmm. yeah. so i can rightly evaluate myself i can rightly evaluate the other i can have the feeling of love within me i can see my relatedness with the other but at the same time i don't get attached to the other i don't get involved to the extent that i also start suffering their pain you feel that you would like to alleviate their pain so you do something to alleviate mm. the pain to bring down the pain of the other to bring down the suffering mm. you want them mm. you, know, you want to try to or you make effort to help them mm. be calm mm. but at the same time you don't start suffering with them because then that means what my own stability is shaky isn't it yeah i i want to share one more thing ma'am in the earlier uh, whenever i saw that uh, any child like a uh, like a beggar some uh, child there in uh, standing in a street or something else they are not having a, at least the basic facility uh, when i saw and come to home when i am alone i thinking i put myself in that condition how i i if i am in that place like that i start to cry ma'am that is how i imagine myself and i start to cry like that it uh, so i bless like uh, i have a uh, good parents they take care so like that i suffer uh, means i felt very bad uh, nowadays it is reduced ma'am yeah so you will see that you know crying doesn't help the other person doesn't help yeah. me doesn't help the other person yeah yeah ma'am yeah so what i will do i will f- certainly feel for the other mm-hmm. and especially also to try to see from the other's perspective mm-hmm. that they have had hardships they don't have the kind of things that we have but mm-hmm. rather than feel bad you feel gratitude that you have so much yeah that yeah you share with the other mm-hmm. so when you share with the other you feel that joy of giving also mm-hmm. at yeah, the same yeah. time you are already full brimming with love and with that you know your your feeling calm comfortable within with mm-hmm. that you help the other person yeah mm-hmm. yeah do something yeah. to support them but if we just sit and cry like i said you know child is crying yeah. child falls gets hurt is crying mother also starts crying then mm. who is going to help the child yeah but if mm. the mother feels for the child mm. doesn't start crying feels for mm. the child rushes mm. and tries to help the child now it will make mm. a difference isn't it yeah ma'am definitely ma'am yeah thank you thank you and namaste didi namaste sabhi ko happy mm. a yoga day to one and all and uh, didi i wanted to ask a query uh, like uh, while explaining the certain uh, content uh, during the classes like uh, uh, high occupied uh, molecular orbital as well as uh, low unoccupied uh, molecular orbitals uh, how the movement of electron uh, will changes Uh, that may uh, fulfill for the valence uh, state we will study in i am lost in this i am sorry but i don't uh-huh. have an engineering base no no dibi i am just uh, correlating the same is it is similarly the existence as well as coexistent in the uh, any some supernatural cell can help the other self to enrich or in the form of to enlightenment to give certain 
things to okay. happen. So many words you are using now. I don't follow what you are saying. What is a supernatural self? A super some something it is giving enrichment to ourselves. No, what like is that? What mean? we will say, panchabhutas. What are panchabhutas? The body is made up of the five elements. Yes. Mm -hmm. Huh. But so, uh, always body cannot give, uh, it is not taking only the thing from the uh, body itself. Something is there now outside. It is enriching every day. Like uh, carbon dioxide and oxygen. Huh. Being in space, every unit is energized. It is active. No? Huh. It is self-organized. It is able to see its relationship and fulfill that relationship. Huh. By virtue of being in space, this is what we are saying. Hmm. So that means, yeah, influence can be taken place by every everywhere. Or it is, it is only our preconditions, Didi. No, this is what is being said. That space huh. is there. Hmm. In this whole existence, it is in the form of coexistence. Units hmm. are submerged in space. This is what is hmm. being said. Uh -huh. Now, it may be a preconditioning till we can directly observe it. So, you yes. can keep it open. Yes, yes. And try to observe it. Isn't okay. it? Yeah. Okay, Didi. Thank you, Didi. Uh, I'll share the, the thing, whatever I observed and I have written in a diary. I, yeah. I'll share it to you, Didi. The, because it is time is uh, less now. Nah? I'll share individually. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Didi. Namaste. Thank you. Namaste. Namaste. Okay, we'll not take any more um, observations now. Let's go forward. Um, yes. So if you look at now with step seven, we have come to the conclusion of exercise two. Observing not just the body, we were already observing the self with exercise one. Now we are observing the self and the body and the interaction between the self and the body in space. So we said I am there, body is there. Now we can say that I am there in space, body is also there in space. This may be there as information, but eventually we will need to directly see this. I transact information with the body through space from time to time as and when I require. We said this also that I am the one who is deciding what instruction has to be passed to the body, what sensation has to be read from the body. All this decision making I am doing. So being in space by virtue of being in space, this possibility is there for me to transact that information, to be able to give the instruction, to be able to read the sensation. But the decision about what sensation to read, what instruction to give, that is entirely up to me. I am the one who is deciding about that. In step four, we said, that when I read the sensation, I can see that I am not the sensation. I can see, I can read the sensation that is taking place in any part of the body from wherever I am, at the distance from the sensation. So if there's a distance between me and the sensation, in other words, there is a distance between the self and the body. In step five, we said that whenever I am interacting, with the body or with the world outside. We, we are doing it by way of sensation only, you know, through the body, sensation through the body. So I'm not seeing things that are, you know, the essence of it. I am just seeing whatever I can see through the body. And I am reading that sensation by my decision, by my choice, because so many sensations are there outside. I'm choosing 
whatever I think is important, I choose to read that sensation. We took examples of this when we were doing the exercises. So if you are, you know, looking at the sunrise, there is a beautiful sunrise. Now, lot of things, lot of um, images may be coming into your eyes, no? onto the retina. There are also plants, there are also shrubs, there are also uh, the road, some people are walking, so many things. But my focus is on what? On the sunrise. So it is almost as if I have zoomed into the sunrise and everything else doesn't exist for me for that moment. As if. So you'll see that similarly, whatever I give importance to, that's what I try to look at. Or that's what I try to, the information that I get through reading the sensation. And when I read that sensation, then while reading that sensation, I give some meaning to that sensation. And whatever meaning I give to it, depends on whatever I have assumed about things from before. So if I have assumed that success means you must be smartly dressed and you must have a big house, a car, all this. And if I see a man working outside a house, in shabby clothes, I assume he is not successful. Because of my preconditioning, because of whatever I meaning that I am giving to it. It may very well be that it is the owner of the house only who is <laughs> doing some work outside in the yard. But I assume that this is an unsuccessful, unimportant person because of the meaning that I have given to it, based on whatever I have assumed. So like this, you will notice that we keep giving meanings to the sensations that we read. And how we will react or respond, that depends on the meaning that we are giving. That meaning is that assumption you know, the meaning that we are giving is coming from that assumption or that sanskar that we have. Over time, we have gathered that again and again and again through past experiences or through whatever we have heard or whatever. We have gathered this, this sanskar. And if this sanskar is not based on the reality, if it is just based on as a, an, an assumption which is not true, then, you know, my feeling is being decided by this sanskar and it may not be in line with the natural acceptance. So therefore, I may react. I may be happy, I may be unhappy. It depends what kind of sanskar it is. But if my sanskar is based on understanding, if what I have assumed about the reality is actually in line with what is the reality, then I can continue to be in harmony. So with the right understanding, of course, I can see the th things as they are, and I have that feeling, we talked about it, feeling of love. I see my relatedness. I have the right feeling. My feeling is in accordance with my nature. And I am in a state of happiness. So therefore, I respond. So you'll notice that everything has to do with my assumptions, the sanskars that I have. So how to correct this? So in order to be able to 
be happy in order to be able to go in the right direction i have to keep working with referring to my natural acceptance seeing my imagination first and foremost trying to see the feeling working with the imagination and seeing that it is coming in line with the natural acceptance or not in that process i will also notice as a natural process that i may have some sanskars which are driving my feeling and the feeling is not in line so those sanskars then i will see that they don't they are not worth keeping that decision once i make they will become weaker and weaker and eventually fall off so i am developing those sanskars which are in line with understanding and i am letting go of those that are not in line with understanding so you can say this is a clean up process in this clean up process i am moving towards that pure part of me that you know pure observer what we say the natural acceptance i am moving in that direction till ultimately all my sanskars are in line with the natural acceptance with the understanding so this is a process it takes time it is a slow process and we all need to work towards it but the important thing to see is it should not be looked at as drudgery it should not be that when i get to realization i will be happy but in that meantime i am miserable because i am not reached there that's not the point the point is right now here this moment i can have the right feeling i can be happy so being happy i have to get there not that when i get there i will be happy that part should be very clear for us so we'll reflect on this and with this this concludes the um step 7 of exercise 2 and then from tomorrow we'll go back to the lectures where we had left it so we'll go to lecture 17 and go forward from there right now if there are any questions any observations oh in fact we are sorry to say that we don't have much time so we'll reflect on this for today and then tomorrow when uh, you know after you have reflected on this if there are questions observations we'll take that first thing by 30 in the morning and then we'll go on to lecture 17 so that's it for today thank you